Hello there, I'm Dr Phil Hammond. Welcome to EmbarrassingProblems.com. Uh, in this film we're talking about the penis. In fact, this is penis part one, because I've decided to split the penis up into three parts. Uh, this is not necessarily something I'd try at home, but there's a lot in a penis, so it is worthy of a trilogy. Uh, this is my penis. Uh, not actually mine, it belongs to my dog. But a top tip for penis preservation, if you are a dog owner, um, always put your pants on before you say hello in the morning. Thank you. Today we're talking about the little top end. This is the glands of the penis, the head of the penis, which looks a bit like Darth Vader's helmet, and the bit that goes over it, which is the foreskin. Normally the glands doesn't come off, but it does in mine. Uh, now, you may not have a foreskin. Yours may have been removed at birth uh, with a process called circumcision. That sometimes happens for religious reasons, sometimes for cultural reasons. Uh, in America, for example, they remove a lot more foreskins at birth than they do in the UK. Uh, the arguments for removing the foreskin is that uh, not having a foreskin reduces your risk of sexually transmitted infections such as HIV and syphilis, it reduces your risk of getting urinary tract infections, and also reduces your risk of uh, cancer of the penis. However, these conditions are quite rare anyway, uh, and you can dramatically reduce them by washing. Uh, and if we were to cut off all the bits of our body that could turn nasty, if we didn't wash them, we wouldn't have much of a body left. So generally, in the UK, we tend to leave the foreskin be, but try to remember to wash behind it. There are one or two conditions that mean you do have to have your foreskin removed with a circumcision. One is called BXO, which is a fancy name for a, a peculiar skin condition that causes a real thickening and scarring at the end of the penis. All, all the, the, the foreskin itself all goes all thickened and white and doesn't pull back, it's painful. Generally, then, you do need to have a circumcision. And just occasionally, when you get into adulthood, you're not able to pull the penis back, you're getting lots of infections, or your stream is going all over the place like a wayward hose. Uh, that's sometimes a reason for having a circumcision too. But the, the babies are born with the foreskin covering the glands, and it generally doesn't start pulling back till about the age of three or four. Sometimes a lot later than that. It's not that uncommon for boys of 13 or 14 still to have a little bit of problem pulling the, the foreskin back. Once you get to about 15, or if you're getting lots of infections, or as I say, the stream is all over the place, it's certainly worth going to see a doctor to discuss what the options are. But generally with a tight foreskin, if you just sit in a bath and gently ease it back. Don't force it, because if you tear it, you'll make it worse, you'll cause scarring. But just gently, gently, gently try and pull it back and give it a little wash underneath it. Because that's really where the problems start with foreskins. The foreskin is lovely and dark and damp behind it. And if you don't wash behind it, you're asking for trouble. Not only do you get that um, rather unpleasant smegma cheesy smell, uh, a lot of uh, women will say, I'm not putting that in my mouth, uh, and you need to wash behind, keep it nice and clean, but also it increases the risk of infections, uh, particularly uh, thrush and also certain bacterial infections because they like it where it's dark and moist. So it's very important that you wash behind your foreskin regularly. Only need to use plain water for this. Uh, if you use a lot of detergent or use a lot of shower gel or a lot of chemical, you can actually irritate things and make things worse. And some men are super clean. They, they want to have a pristine helmet and they scrub behind there with a scrubbing brush and they put all sorts of chemicals on and that causes a chemical irritation. That can make it even worse. So all you need to do is use water to wash behind, wipe away all that smegma, and then dry it afterwards. Hang it out to dry. Uh, you can dab it with a towel or you can use a hairdryer, not on too hot, just to dry to make sure it's nice and dry and then gently pull the foreskin back afterwards. Because there's another condition called paraphimosis where you pull the foreskin back and it gets stuck if you don't pull it back again. Uh, and it can cause a tight band around the head of the penis, uh, and that can make this bit turn black, which is not a good look. Uh, it's, uh, it's cut off its blood supply, you need to go to the hospital urgently to get that sorted out. Uh, but if you practice good uh, foreskin hygiene, you gently ease it back. In just about all boys, eventually the foreskin will go back. If you are finding it's red and it's tender and it's painful, you do need to go and see a GP. He may be able to diagnose thrush or a bacterial infection and give you some cream to sort it out. Uh, and you may get one or two recurrent infections like this, but generally, as I say, in time, the foreskin will go back and probably doesn't need to be uh, removed. Uh, tomorrow, uh, wait, that's not going to be tomorrow, you can watch it now if you want to. I'm going to be talking about sexually transmitted infections, lumps and bumps, and also some ordinary lumps that you can find on your penis that you might think are nasty things, but are actually perfectly normal. So that'll be in penis part two. If you want to check me out and see if I'm a credible doctor, uh, my website is drphilhammond.com. Or if you want to find out more about embarrassing problems, embarrassingproblems.com. See you in a bit.